For SpongeBob's 10th anniversary, the team behind the scenes gave fans a big surprise with a brand new opening sequence. Here's an exclusive look at the process behind sending SpongeBob into the third dimension. I'm Paul Tibbet. I'm the executive producer of SpongeBob SquarePants. Well, we had the idea to, to do a new opening for, for the 10th anniversary, and it's sort of uh, of a um, exploded version of SpongeBob. I mean, I think we, um, we were pushing it out of the 2D realm into the 3D world. Now, if not local nonsense means something you wear, then drop all the deck and flop like a fish. We were thrilled to get approached to do this uh, title sequence for the 10 year anniversary, but it was also a little bit daunting because the original title sequence is uh, so recognizable and everyone's seen it over and over and it, it's so great in its own way. So it was just a bit of a challenge that if we were gonna do the 10 year uh, title that it had to be something new and special. Part of the, the, the original opening title, there was a lot of stuff. We thought, well, we don't wanna just redraw it we want it to be something special and different, so we thought we would do it uh, in three dimensions. And, and um, then uh, we, we brought the project to Screen Novelties and they brought back all these other ideas that we, we were just blown away by that we'd never, we, we hadn't even really considered. I think it's, it's something uh, Kind of when you're a kid, it's almost like seeing your toys come to life, you know, like you kind of have this fantasy about like you sleep at night and your toys get up and do stuff. And then to me, the stop motion always was like kind of that's what was happening. You know, you were kind of watching little toys running around. And one of the cool things about stop motion is that you can reappropriate just anything you find like this Easter Island head was made out of little uh, cardboard boxes from light bulbs. We'll just paste it over the foam, the form. And uh, for the pineapple house exterior, we used burlap sacks and cut them into little diamond shapes and glued them on the outside to just give it a more handmade texture. I don't know, there's something that you can't get from, from 2D, you know, traditional 2D animation or, or computer generated animation either that you get with uh, stop action that it's just magical. When I was asked to board the original title sequence, uh, Steve just came to me with a cassette tape and said, here's the theme song and board it and let's see what you got. And then he came in and, and threw out 80%, 85% of my ideas and we worked together and sort of made it what it is today. The only part that's still there from my original board is when SpongeBob plays the uh, flute on his nose. I think that SpongeBob has definitely found a very high place in the um, history of opening themes. Um, just, you know, because a good opening theme should should really just burrow right into your head like a tick. The show's always had sort of a mixed media aspect to it. The human mouth inside Painting the Pirate is actually um, Steve Hillenberg, creator of SpongeBob. We, you know, have clips from movies and we have uh, fish puppets and, and uh, human hands and all that stuff. To, this seemed like a, a, a logical step forward in the evolution of theme songs. We got to do some 2D animation. We got to do a weird run cycle with SpongeBob and a fish kind of getting chased around a, a wharf. It was kind of like this fire drill of drawings of SpongeBob and a fish going all the way around a, a little harbor. The biggest surprise in the new opening title for me was the, um, the treatment of Painty the Pirate in the beginning. I think the whole um, coin-operated, um, fortune-telling, kind of uh, arcade, old-fashioned, turn-of-the-century arcade game uh, was a great idea. Our idea was, like, our goal was, like, the more disturbing, the better, because I don't think there's, I don't think there's a fortune-telling machine out there that doesn't disturb people yeah. when they see it. Yeah. It was a great idea, and, you know, they, they brought it to us, and I was just expecting maybe a 3D version of the painting, but I think we, we got something totally different and, and it's, it's very cool. There's a lot of different versions of SpongeBob in this title. There's, um, there's a puppet and there's some uh, painted on cardboard um, animation. I like the, the, uh, the little skeletons the best. I, I, I have a soft spot for the jokes in the show where SpongeBob's skin gets ripped off or something happens and you see a skeleton because it's such a weird shape, you know, and uh, and this one's especially cool because even though he's
completely skinless. He still has his underwear on. This is my favorite. <laughs> I'm gonna try and take it when they're done. And now, here's the finished product, the brand new SpongeBob SquarePants opening sequence. Are you ready, kids? I can't hear you! Ha, ha, ha. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants! Absorbent and yellow and porous is he? SpongeBob SquarePants! Now, if not local nonsense be something you wear, SpongeBob SquarePants! Then jump on the deck and flop like a fish! Well, when SpongeBob turns 20, we're gonna throw him an even bigger party with a bigger cake and more stuff. You can catch SpongeBob SquarePants only on Nickelodeon.